to be a great people, Kalel. They wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. Hey everybody, welcome to the video and welcome to the channel. We're going to go over to um, Goodwill. It's going to be the same Goodwill. It's going to be two different days. Um, that first trip though, <laughs> man, somebody, there must have been something inside a, um, like a, a, I was thinking, the first thing that popped in my head was something inside a crock pot that was left in there that was donated because there was a weird, crazy stench that took over the whole store. And once once it hit, boom, we had to get out of there. Um, I didn't smell it initially, but somebody must open something and boom, it was it was done after that with, oh my God, we, we had to get out of there. So um, we still able to get a few cool things out of there before that occurred. So I included uh, a second trip over to that same Goodwill and uh, we got uh, you know, a few more items there as well too. Uh, stay tuned to the end. We'll do um, so, you know, some talking points. See, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna break down the like the fee structure and all that. What to expect when you sell an item on eBay? Like how much is actually taken by eBay? And uh, a couple of few sold items. So, um, oh, like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and oh, uh, hit the bell notification because we do go live now on Thursdays, live from the flea market. Um, and the reason is I don't have a way to set that up ahead of time. I have to just do it from the GoPro app. So if you have the bell notification, you'll get notified when I go live. Uh, let's get to the Goodwill. All right. Well, we have a cart waiting for us here at the front door. Might as well scope out what they got. Interesting. There's a $6,500 price tag on this, but... Ba bam Big old crack right there. And plus I think it's just a TJ Maxx piece. Okay, let's go turn off the glass over here. I'm running a little bit late. Good morning. Good. How you doing? Check out the purses here. Hey, good morning. Uh, a little bit late this morning. Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. How are you doing? Good, good. We're out of routine this morning, so just trying to, you know, nice. get back on schedule here. Nice. Yeah, I hear you, man. Did you hit up the uh, flea market at all? No, no. We have stuff to do at the house, and then we're like, all right, let's get out there. Yeah. Hurry up. <laughs> I hear you, man. I know. It was just, we, we got up too late. So we hit up some yard sales. And Anything out there? Yeah, some decent stuff. Oh, cool. Not, not too crazy, but, um, yeah, you know, like, Saturdays has been kind of rough for us at the flea market, so it's yeah. more of, like, people have been pricing their shit up like crazy, so it's... Taxi for that, so. Yeah, exactly. Dude, have you been doing a whole thing about it? Batteries are what, Jelly Belly Star, more Jelly Belly stuff around here though. Yeah, this is a Star Wars one. Although his feet are kind of broken. 
Yeah, they're really broken. Look at Star Wars Jolly Belly. All the guy's feet are broken off. You good over here? Okay. No headband. VHS, uh, VHS recorder was, uh, no, rewinder was back there. Huh. This is your kangaroo smart home modern kit. What is this? Is this actually this still sealed? Okay. Might have something there. These little gooseneck ones actually do really well, but fourteen dollars. Mm -mm. There's a Bodum though. Bodum's usually a good brand. Although I'm hearing stuff move around in there. Ow. What's in here? What do we got? It is a used water kettle, so we're definitely not picking that up. We'll put that back in there. Didn't even have the lid. From what I, did. From what I saw. Lights, knives. Oh, that really hurt my finger. Lights, knives, and multi-tools. I, mean, I don't think, I think that's just a light. I don't think that has everything in it. Let's see this little baby monitor. What was it on top of? Is it actually in there? That's the question. All right. Oh, what do we got here? 17, nine. Target section. This is interesting. I'm gonna look these up. This is an old company name for little cars in the past. Let me scan this really quick. Okay, so the little cars I don't think are worth too too much, but for nostalgia's sake, so nostalgia's sake, <laughs> so I do remember that brand from way back in the day, from back in the 80s, I didn't even know they made, um, I didn't even know they made uh, modern cars, look at this, little dog food, Nice
anxiety vitamin packs. This little meat grinder. That's interesting. Something's not right over here. Something is really... Oh my god, there's like an odor all of a sudden. Let's get out of here. Let's go this way. Okay, let's come this way. All right, we gotta get out of there. Oh, for this camera. <clears throat> okay, we're getting back out here, and oh man, I think we're gonna bolt. We're taking. Oh man. There. Yeah, we're, we are not paying. Okay, we are. I'm just gonna put some stuff back. I can't hang here right now. There's a serious. Oh man. There's a serious. Rotten, <clears throat> rotten meat. I don't know what. There's an odor. Rotten. Something's rotten. And <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta get the hell out of here. I can't take this. Okay, we're getting out of here. What in all? What do we have over here? A little something different? They kind of change things up over here by the glass. What is this? A little mini computer? Oh, that's a tiny one. I mean, little computers probably aren't worth, little computers aren't really worth too, too much. All right. Let's get to the back. Those little computers were called um, netbooks. Someone already donated them. They weren't very powerful, but just um. Really meant just for surfing the internet.
Looks like a little heater. Is that what it is? Yeah. Do these prices seem like they've gone up lately? They do. They have, I think. <laughs> yeah, I definitely right. think they have. Yeah, I'm like, some of these things are really <laughs> Okay. Especially the new stuff coming out here. What? Especially the new stuff coming out here. <laughs> what do we got here? Again with the chickens. These chickens are everywhere. See them all over the place. Alright, what do we got? Goosebumps board game. Ultimate Uno. What is this? Oh, well, it's a t shirt. It's a fun go. Probably not really worth it. We got a little power line adapter, TP link. Okay, let's see. It's. Um, game of Risk. Come on, Monster. Starting lineups for Big Nose. I mean, these do sound like the old starting lineup before, but you really gotta get them really cheap. A dollar or less, less than a dollar, I would say. Because it's gonna sit for a while. Um, we'll definitely do a little bit of a deeper dive, but just checking the surface right now. Not anything. Nothing there. Oh, right here. Here we go. Here we go. Right here. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh. Get this out here. Oh, it's all tangled up. I got it. That's annoying. Come on. Everything's all tangled up. Come on. Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, it's a little keyboard. A little half keyboard. It's a gaming device. This one appears to be, oh, kind of adjustable. That's good. There's different variations of this. My preference is the original by a company by Belkin. They made the original one. And then Razer. Um, I don't know if they actually, I don't think they bought the company, but they at least have the design now. And they make some, I, I don't really care for the Razer ones. Although I do like the simplicity of that one. I do have a ra I do have a razor one, but it's a little it's too many keys. Alright, these keyboards really aren't worth it. Oh yeah. I mean, now that I found some gaming devices, maybe, or a gaming device, there might be other. Hmm. Hmm. 
There might be other PC gaming stuff. That could be a sign that maybe somebody that builds computers perhaps donated some items here. So a Novo keyboard. Not really that great. I, this large tech one I saw last week, I believe, I was here. All right, we're going down the aisle with the loud music, so I'll be right back. All right, we'll just pick up some Oneida silverware. Um, looks a little too plain. I'm not sure. I'm going to scan it, see if I can pull up. But it's a lot of silver in the bag for ten dollars, so uh, it's like a blue hue to it. Hmm. Oh, they have Princess House or something. Made in Yugoslavia. Yeah, probably not worth it. Um, I got the silverware, I got the calculator, I don't know what this thing is, I just grabbed it because, I got this thing right here, I'm not 100% sure what that is yet, <laughs> I just grabbed it. Lots of chickens, roosters around here, all over the place. Okay, let's, uh, you know what, let's go check out the, um... Target area, then we'll check out the mugs, and then we'll circle back to the uh, miscellaneous pottery and glass. What do we got here? Dress trucks. Mm. Oh yeah, last week there was a there was something like I don't know what somebody did, what somebody opened, but there was a disgusting smell. Of rotten meat. So I'm gonna scan these, see if they're worth anything. Yeah, most of the stuff that comes from Target are usually, you know, obviously items that have been sitting on the shelves. No one's really, um, no one's purchased at Target. So, however, they could have not purchased it because it wasn't popular or, um, too high of a price. So then hopefully if it was too high of a price it comes here I can get it at a better deal discount and um, try to resell it at the appropriate price. This is broken. I usually do pick these up um, and they do sell around 30-ish dollars but it's broken right there. Definitely look out. I mean, I come across a lot of, uh, come across uh, Cal and Stanford, obviously because I'm in California. But depending on what state you're in, your college, college stadium replicas can do pretty well. trying to figure out what this thing is and I'm gonna check these back um, end caps okay I figured out what that is I started taking it out and realized it's a um, it's a barbecue a Japanese little not barbecue what Japanese little portable grill and um, I, 
the old like cast iron ones can do really well, but that's just like a portable, I think, order on Amazon style. So we're gonna leave that behind. And I really don't feel like cleaning it either. Try to get ready to resell. But the calculator and the silver, I think, just because it's such a massive set, I should do okay. Not a whole dinosaur. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Popular playthings. Hmm. It's intriguing. Okay. So I'm gonna go put that. I'm gonna put that grill back. We're definitely not gonna get that. Hmm. Little things, kind of cool. What do you make this? Hmm. Ryan. Okay. There's some little co little coasters, but no sort of very done thing. Yeah, we're gonna put this we're gonna put this back over here with these appliances and stuff. So it's just like a little stainless steel cylinder. You would put you know your coals and put a little, it has a little grill over it. I forget. Uh, just a little grill, you know, like little skewers. So what is this? Just oh, light bulbs. It had some weight to it. I was like, what? What's, what is that? Um, all right, let's see what else we'll find. All right, so that's what we're going to walk out with right now. We're going to head on out. Unless I find anything else, I'll pop my gone. A little Toomey travel bag. Pretty good. Goes for about 15 ish. A little Lego set. Can never turn down a brand new Lego set. We got the Graphic calculator there, twenty-five-ish dollars. This right here should be about like thirty to forty. The gaming thing. And that's kind of like the wild card right there. If I had to guess, probably right around for the whole bag, forty to fifty bucks. The whole bag. It's all Oneida. It's all the same uh, same set to you. So, all right, let's. Head to the front, and if I see anything else, I'll let you know. What is this? Kind of interesting. All right. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, everybody, welcome to the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed that trip over, two trips over to Goodwill. Um, you know, like I said in the beginning, that, that smell was just out of control, so we had to get out of there. It was an emergency situation, and we bolted. Um, it was just unbelievable, and yeah. So that's why I added another trip over to Goodwill to the end of to the end of that to the end of the not the end of the video, but the second part of the video. <laughs> Either way, uh, you got two bonus two trips to Goodwill, two different days, same Goodwill though. And uh, we found that that TI eighty four graphing calculator. I believe that was the platinum edition. Um, which does pretty well. The TI-83 Plus is the one that you know, everybody talks about, you know, to pick up, look out for it. It does pop up from time to time, and I do pick it up. That one goes roughly about between $20 and $30. Um, this one here, too, goes for about $30-ish or so. Um, there are other ones. It's kind of weird. Like, the numbers, there's like a TI-86 calculator, TI-89, but those really don't do that good. Um, not as good as the 83. You would think the higher numbers would be better, but... Not really. And then I have found some other like rechargeable graphing calculators that have done really well. So definitely look them up. If it looks like a graphic calculator, look it up. I mean, look up the name, they'll have the model number on it. Easy. Okay, um, I was at, I wanted to show you guys something and I didn't bring it out. Um, but I'm gonna, oh, hold on one second. Okay. 
So we're back, and I got the item, and also, too, I realized my battery on my microphone died, so hopefully this audio is okay. I'm just using the audio through the microphone through the camera, so. Um, what I wanted to show you guys, I might get a little closer here, too. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys was this right here. I was at Goodwill, saw this in the glass, and I went to this Goodwill later, so this has been sitting there for a while. I'm not sure if it was sitting there just during the day. The actual uh, price tag didn't have a date on it, which it usually does. But um, I don't know if it was in there for the day or for, you know, a you know, couple of days. But it had sit been sitting there for at least a few hours and nobody picked it up. $32 is what I paid for it. This is an AIO or an all-in-one cooler for a CPU uh, computer, internal, you know, internal cooling for a computer. Uh, this part goes on top of your CPU and then it, you know, the liquid the the liquid that's in there usually like a coolant um there are water loops as well too but it um you know takes the heat away from there and goes into a radiator and then it cools it down with the fans and ejects the air usually out of the case so uh really cool glad to find that in there for 32 dollars because that should sell for about 150 dollars now i've talked about computer components before you see me buy used ones but when you're buying used, it's you never know if it's going to work. You could sell it for parts, but it's going to take a while to sell for parts. Not many people you know, want broken items. You know, some people use do use the little uh, uh, components that are on there, but not that many people are looking for it. So if you have something that works, you need or you have an item that you don't know if it works or not, you need to be able to test it. You need to be kind of specialized in that area. I can do that stuff with computer products. Other stuff I can't, but computer products, yes, I can. Uh, but you, with this here, you do not have to worry about it because this is brand new sealed. All you have to do is look up the name right there, and you'll get all your information on eBay, and you can sell it. Just brand new sealed. I mean, hundred, probably 150 bucks. Some of the comps are a little bit up there, around $200. But I really don't think it's a two hundred dollar piece. I think it's more of about one forty to one fifty. So that'll be a great sale once it sells. Okay, now what I want to talk about today is let me get the little picture up here. It's gonna pop up over here. Is a sale that I made recently. Actually, let me talk about the hat first. So uh, I bought these hats. Bought about, I think I talked about it yesterday. I bought a bunch of hats for. Um, $2.59, which I thought was like, wow, because usually they're closer to $5 a hat. And, you know, I'll, I'll do the breakdown of the cost and everything. You'll see why, you know, you're like, woohoo, like, yeah, you get $2 off, but every dollar, every cent counts. And um, so this is the hat right here, Syracuse University. So Syracuse uh, is in, uh, University is in New York. Really cool hat. Definitely look out for um, university hats. Uh, also, um, you know, university clothing does well. Uh, I don't really sell, like, T-shirts. I mean, I'll find sweaters from time to time and try to resell them. But I like hats, and, you know, it was a cool hat. It was a great deal on all the hats, so I picked up a whole bunch of hats. Now, I'm going to give you the breakdown right now really quick. Um, where are we at? Okay, it's going to pop up right over here. And this is going to be the breakdown of what it's sold for and what um, you know what we'll ultimately make on the hat. So, okay, so this sold. It took um, about a day and a half to sell, so pretty quick on that hat. And I listed a bunch of hats when I did that one as well too. But it sold for fifteen dollars. Now five dollars sixty two cents is what the buyer paid for shipping. That is not what. Um, I'm going to pay for shipping. I'm going to pay a little bit less than that because I use a flat weight system. Uh, I do calculate the shipping. Flat weight is just a made-up term by me, I guess. Uh, but you can do flat rate, which is you basically set the price of the shipping, and that's what someone pays. Calculate shipping will be based on where you're located and then based on where the buyer is located. And eBay will calculate that shipping out for you, which is what I did in this case. Uh, then you have sales tax for an order total of $21.44 is what the buyer paid. Now, what you actually earn, so $21.44 minus the sales tax and then minus the selling cost. So those are the fees that are associated with selling the item, the total cost of the fees. 
Now the fee, the percentage is is different for every category. Mine are going to be lower than others because I am a top rated plus seller, so I do get 10% off my final value fees. And I believe the hat category, if I'm not mistaken, is 13.25%, but I'm not 100% sure. I automatically assume they're going to take the maximum amount percent. Whenever I'm out there buying items, I automatically assume they're going to take the maximum amount, which is 15% is the highest, yeah, I believe that is the highest, uh, no matter what category it is, that's gonna be the highest percentage they're gonna take. So I automatically assume that, it's automatically being processed in my brain. Now, you may watch some channels, and I watch all, everybody's channel, you know, a lot of different channels on YouTube, a lot of different, you know, uh, pickers and, you know, flippers, and even the people that criticize those people. And one of the biggest criticisms that people have are, you know, resellers are ripping people off. Well, there's a lot that goes into our thought process, our their lot processing when we're looking at items to buy to resell online. Now, when I was looking at this hat and I saw the two dollars some cents, I was all right. I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna make what it says here. I'm gonna make about ten dollars on each of these hats. That's actually what I'm gonna you know what's gonna get. Well, that's not what's gonna go into the bank, but that's ultimately what I'm gonna make. So. After the fees, $17.84. Now, I have to subtract the cost of the hat. So, let me get my calculator up here. $17, what did I say, 84 cents? So, 84 cents, okay. So, what I actually paid for the hat was $2.59. So, we're, oops, messing that up. Minus $2.59. So, now we're at $15.25. Now I have to subtract the cost of the label because eBay bundles it all together, which, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Do I like the fact that they take out, you know, they take their percentage out, including when including the, the shipping cost? No, but that's the, you know, that's what I'm working with here. You know, that's where I choose to sell my item. So that's, that's what I got to play. That's the game. You know, that's, you know, that's what I'm agreeing to in order to sell my items on one of the largest platforms. Okay, so the actual shipping cost on this hat, uh, the weight with the hat and the box is going to be uh, 8 ounces. It's going to come out to $4.68, so minus 4.68. Um, now I have to account for the cost of the actual supplies, so the box. I don't have to use any bubble wrap or anything else with this hat, so that's great. So the box is 42 cents, so minus 42 cents for the box with this hat. And we are at $10.15, so just about what I thought we I would make on these hats is $10, about $10, so $10.15 is what I'll make on each of these hats. So, not bad. Am I getting rich? No, but... Multiply that times all the hats I purchased, and we got some pretty good profit um, on the overall deal. Also, most of these hats are probably going to sit around for a little while. They're not going to sell as quick as this one did. Um, did I know this was going to sell quick? I knew it was going to sell. I didn't know it was going to take you know a day and a half to sell, but it did. And uh, one thing I used in my um, listing was the script. You know, a lot of people um, like those old school like 90s uh, early 2000 hats sports hats with the script on it so i put script in the um in the listing title so i think that helped to get it sell sold but great sale i hope that helps you guys you know just a little breakdown of what the fees are and everything if you're just starting out if you're not top rated plus you know you will pay a little bit more but just always go with the in my opinion, always go with the assumption that they're going to take out 15% no matter what. And uh, that'll help you, obviously, you know, make a little bit more because then you're like, okay, well, it's not so... And that category is only a 13% category or there's other categories that are less than that too as well. Um, but uh, obviously try to get top rated plus if you can. Uh, you got to get top rated. You know, there's certain metrics you have to meet to be top rated. But then to get top rated plus, you have to offer um, 
one day turnaround and you have to offer uh, what, um, uh, 30, uh, at least a 30 day uh, free return. So, And you don't have to offer those returns on international shipping. So just domestic. All right. Got that, that, that. Okay. Next are the actual sold items. Let's go into that next. Okay. Actually, one little interesting thing, Syracuse, uh, obviously is a university in, in New York, but Syracuse is actually a city, an ancient city, and uh, it was actually a colony of uh, the Corinthians. So Corinth is a city in uh, in Greece. I mean, they didn't call themselves Greece, Greeks back then, but um, I mean, we know it as Greeks now, or Greek. Um, but Corinth is, was a city in Greece, and you know, they're obviously the Corinthians. <laughs> Those of you that know your Bible know the Corinthians. Um, and they founded the city of Syracuse in Sicily, uh, Sicily, Italy. So, cool little tidbit of history there. Uh, but, okay, let's get to the souls. Uh, Hobo, right off the bat. Hobo, you guys, I've talked about Hobo before. Haven't talked about it recently, but a great brand to look out for. They make wallets, purses. And really easy to identify by touch because they really use a nice, soft leather. Not all the time, but most of the time it's a very soft leather. So kind of easy to identify really quickly what, what it is. And obviously you open it up and you see the label. So Hobo Clutch. I use Clutch because it was a bit of a larger wallet. But it is a wallet. Clutch wallet. Black leather. Retro. And the original, because that's on the tag, I just threw that in there. Don't know if that helped get it sold, but ultimately it sold for $21.50. And Hobo wallets will typically go for over $20. And typically you'll find them for around, what I find them for, around $2 to $3. A wallet. Purses will be a little bit more, but wallets typically get overlooked. So keep your eye out for Hobo. Flies under the radar. Next, we have a Poly Pocket. Now, these aren't the older, older Poly Pockets, but these are from the 90s. Brand new. Found these at a local thrift store in an uh, area of our city called Almaden Valley. And I don't typically go there that often. I go there once in a while. It's not the best. But I happened to find these, and I did pay up for these. They're $25 each. I got five of them. And they're slowly selling. They're, I mean, this one took a little bit to sell. This took over three months. I think it's more like three and a half months for this one. But $80, not bad. Polly Pocket Vintage Toys are what I, I do like to look out for vintage toys. I don't pick them up that often because they are priced up quite a bit. Like these ones here, $25 a piece. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm making good money on it. However, they are taking a while to sell, so, you know, that money's tied up, and I would have rather put that money into other items that could sell quicker, so. We're making good money, ultimately, and it's a small product, easy to ship out, it's lightweight, it's going to go less than a pound, so, cool item, I'm glad it's finally moving. Okay. Then the next one here is really cool. It's this golf. It's a, or this is a golf head cover, so it's you know related to the sport of golf. And this is a kiwi golf head cover, so really cool. Kiwi flightless bird, only found in New Zealand or native to New Zealand. I mean, I should say only because I'm pretty sure they're in zoos around the world now. But uh, native to New Zealand, really cool. I mean, this guy messaged me. I had it for twenty. I would have liked. For it to have sold for 20 but the guy sent me a message said he really liked it and 15 dollars will be settled on and it's an easy easy item to ship out and store it's a plush it's basically a plush um and you could easily mistake this for a plush and i believe i found this in the plush section as well too at goodwill if i'm not mistaken so definitely check them out golf head covers definitely do get more of a premium than an actual plush item because it's associated with the game of golf, and people a lot of people love golf. I don't like golf. Um, but I do pick up golf stuff, and I do like to sell it, because people that play golf typically have uh, disposable income. <laughs> and look at this golf item, by the way. Speaking of golf, check this thing out. 
Look at that. It looks like a Warhammer. If anybody plays Warhammer out there on the computer or a um, World of Warcraft weapon there. Uh, but this is actually a golf training aid. Um, I was looking at a video of it. It has to do with, you know, it kind of generates some wind resistance as it's going through the air there. So, a way to help you with your golf swing, I guess. So, cool device. I am shipping this. I believe, yeah, these actually, these fins actually come off. So, I'll be able to unscrew those, take those off, and uh, it'll be easier to ship in a long box. So, really cool. And this, this should sell for about $40 or $50. And I already took the tag off, so I probably... I know I didn't pay that that much for it, but really cool. At first glance, it kind of looks like a like a some sort of a propeller or something for a boat, but no, it's for golf. So keep your eye out for it. All right. Otherwise, oh, if you guys want to ship these large items out, I know not a lot, not a lot of people like to ship large items, but I don't mind it. Well, I don't mind it. Depends what it is, really. This is long and slim, and I have boxes that this will fit into, so perfect item for me to ship out and hopefully make some money on otherwise thank you guys for watching we'll catch you in the next video um like subscribe bell notification don't forget i do lives now every thursday from the flea market uh barring any unforeseen circumstances we'll be there catch you in the next one